we're plants people or animal people, we want to get out and grow our, our enterprise and we don't want to sit in front of a computer and do number crunching. We also may not want to find out that the favorite thing we like to produce is not making us any money, right? It's ignorance is bliss sometimes, right? It takes a lot of time and they're content with the status quo. So years ago I came up with this cost accounting program that's like I believe in the KISS principle, keep it simple, stupid. How can I take the numbers that I have and get some kind of rough estimate of what my costs are without spending forever? Because those people at the University of Minnesota have these great programs that will tell you down to the penny how much things make, but guess what? It takes weeks to get all those numbers in there and people aren't going to sit there and do it. So I thought, let's come up with things that you already have. You have an income statement that Don talked about earlier. Or if you don't have an income statement, you're going to do an income tax return and you're going to do a Schedule F if you're a farmer or a Schedule C if you're a corporation. It's basically the same thing as an income statement. So you already have to have that because Uncle Sam says you have to have that, right? You usually know the production data. Usually in everybody's head, it's like, how many pennies did I pay for a pot or a plant or a seed? So that's there. And then all you need is a spreadsheet, either on a piece of paper or on a computer. So that's how I came up with uh, a simple cost accounting program. That There's a version that lets you do five different enterprises. It's free on the website here. If you go to just, I know that's a very long address. If you just Google Rutgers Farm Management, you can find this. Um, it lets you do as many as five crops. It was designed for greenhouses, and the reason I'm talking about cost accounting here is that's generally the operation that most people are doing in urban situations. <coughs> so, um, but I, we have another version that's Excel spreadsheet that will let you do some outdoor production as well. So, like I said, we start out with the income statement. You just print out all those in items that Don talked about earlier that you have on your income statement. Um, your cost, your variable cost, your salaries, your overhead cost, and then you see those different columns. Um, I first did this for just greenhouses, so I've got the greenhouse crops in. But like I said, over the years that I've been working with the industry, nobody just has a greenhouse anymore. They've got things outside. So that's why I put that other column for outdoor crops. So if you're growing crops, this can work for you. If you're only doing outdoor, just skip the greenhouse and go over to the outdoor crops. And you put all the information in your income statement. Then the program automatically calculates the percentage of sales for each of those items. And then there's some things we call financial ratios that help you track each year what you're doing. So to get those, for almost all those ratios, you need information from the balance sheet, which Don talked about also. So that's why you don't have to do it so much for cost accounting, but if you want to calculate those ratios, we put in the balance sheet, which again, your accountant, if you have him, he's going to give you or she's going to give you at the end of the year an income statement and a balance sheet. So you have this information. Now, Don talked about benchmarking. The problem with benchmarking for a lot of crops is it's just not out there. There's not information out there in cyberspace that will tell you what the industry is. Why? Because almost all farms are private businesses. They're family owned. They're not corporations, so their financial balance sheet income statements are secret. It's not out there. But guess what? If you're in business every year, you have your own income statement and balance sheet, so you can benchmark against yourself every year and compare what you're doing from one year to the next. So this tool that I developed is really for educational program because once you put that information in, you can get all these financial ratios. And what I did was go through all the land-grant universities in the U.S. and look at what ratios do they think are important for farmers to know. And I came up with, I think it's the sweet 16 or seven, 17, I guess. And then what I did, if you see on that, it's hard to see up close, but if you look online, you can see. So it calculates all those figures for you. And then it lists what all those different universities said it should be, the recommend recommended numbers. So you can compare your number to what experts across the country said it should be. And then it, the next 
column is a formula which tells you how to calculate it, and the final thing is a little explanation in words about what it means because people throw a lot of things about ratios and a lot of people don't understand what they mean. So I just did this as a tool. So every year you put in your income statement, your balance sheet, look at the ratios and see which one's moved and are you going in the right direction. And I think we talked about earlier setting SMART goals so you can see if you're meeting your goals that way. And I'll skip over the income statement and balance sheet part because I think Dawn covered that pretty well. I don't have intermediate, but I looked at those. So I, I took an example I did a few years ago, a survey of greenhouses in New Jersey and Pennsylvania and um, came up with some typical of the people that I averaged. So what was happening then was fuel prices were going up. Um, we don't have that problem now, but other things are going up. So the average, were, they were making about $200,000 um, net income or 9% profit, which is pretty good. But what happened, I kept saying, don't worry so much about fuel. It's only a small percentage of your income. But if it, if it triples like it did a few years back, look what happened. We went from a fairly profitable business, it would be a nice living for a family, to losing a ton of money. And all the ratios went negative too. So what can we do? Well, I'll skip the profitability ratios, but this is what they're calculated to show you what they look like. So what can we do to adjust it? Well, if we just increase our prices by 5%, look at the right. It's not as profitable as it were before, but we're not in the red anymore, at least we're in the black. So the nice thing about this little program is you can do what ifs in the computer program without making those mistakes in the real life world and see what happens. And at that time, people were so hesitant to increase their price. But you know that Charlotte was really encouraging you to do that. And especially if you're a small business and people are coming to you and they value the experience, they're willing to certainly pay 5% more. If you're in a wholesale market, that may be a different uh, situation. The other thing is, are there costs that you can reduce? So if you see the far right column, if we decrease our costs by 5%, the same thing. We're not quite as profitable as we were before, but we're still in business. We haven't gone all red. We can still make it. So just to give you a quick idea of a sort of a typical simple greenhouse with only five crops, which is way fewer than a lot of people have, looking at bedding plants in the spring, poinsettias in the fall, just to keep it simple. Um, what you have to do is to put the information, how many units you start with, how much square feet per each unit, how many weeks you are on the bench in the greenhouse, what percent you sell, and the price. And then it's going to allocate those costs that are on your income statement to each individual crop to see which ones are making and losing money. And if you can't allocate those costs, it just treats it as overhead costs, which we will add in later. So these are numbers that the program calculated for you. And I want to show you that it depends on what you look at, what's the best option. So if you look at sales, it would look like poinsettias are the most profitable, right? Because you're getting more sales from poinsettias. But if you look at the profit per crop, it would be petunia flats. They're bringing in the most money per crop. But if you look at the, the profit per unit or pot, right, then it's a whole different picture. It's petunia flats. But the only thing where you can really compare apples to apples is profit or loss per square foot in the greenhouse space. So then, look, by far, those geraniums and four-inch pots outshine everything else. So... What would you do if you were this greenhouse? You'd make, <laughs> we'd raise petunias and geraniums, right? Well, it's too bad you wouldn't have and any income in the fall. Right. right. And then, then you don't have any income in the fall. And you also have to make sure that you have customers that will buy that many. But this will let you do some, you know, what if examples. Let's see if I can. So, um, So if we triple the prices, the fuel prices, we're still making money on the petunias and the marigolds and the geraniums, but we're losing money on the poinsettias. But if you look at the profit or loss 
per unit, it's 40 cents per pot. So if there was any way that your customers would pay 40 cents more for that poinsettia pot, you would be back in business again. So, um, and if you look at on a per square foot per week basis, we're only losing a penny per square foot okay. per so week. Remember airlines, uh, the question was, should you tell your clients why you're raising the prices if it's because of a fuel increase? What did airlines do? They said, oh, we're going to put a fuel surcharge. Did they ever take it away once the price? <laughs> no. <laughs> so I think, if, you know, it depends on your relationship with your customers. But if we're, you know, if we're honest with the customers and we have a good relationship, I think they would understand. And a lot of people are very much interested in keeping the local agricultural business in business. And, uh, you know, what I heard yesterday is a lot of garden centers are going out. So if, if you're, you know, producing your own product and selling directly and people value that contact with you versus going to a big box store, I think they would be willing to do that. So what happens... Now, we had the example of tripling the price, but look what happened. What's more important than the price of fuel tripling is the fact that we're growing all these plants and we're only selling 80%. Like our what we call our shrink, our loss is 20%. So that's a bigger impact on our business than what's happening with fuel prices. So in the past, again, everybody just grew a greenhouse full of plants and then they tried to sell them afterwards. Well, with the tight margins, we're trying to pre-sell them. That's how CSAs came into being, is we're going to sell it ahead of time so we only grow what we've already sold. So that's another thing to keep in mind, is what, what is your shrink and, and how that really just makes everything red um, all different directions. So then, just a quick showing you the outdoor production. A lot of people that were growing those type of crops in a greenhouse were growing outdoor flowers. So then we can put in the units, and this time in acres instead of square feet, how many weeks it's out there and what percent they sell and the price so that you can get then a, an example for outside. And Don also mentioned cash flow. Cash flow is really important in agriculture. Why? Because we very rarely pre-sell things and have the money up front. You're buying the seed, you're buying the chickens or whatever it is, and then you're growing it, and then you're selling it, and then you're waiting to get paid. So we can have a profitable business but still go broke because why? We still got to pay the light bill, the employees, the pot supplier, everything else involved. So cash flow is very important. So we added this section so that it takes your income statement, all that information from your income statement, and lets you divide it over the 12 months so you can see when your income and expenses come into play. So that's the latest thing. You know, over I started doing this several years ago, just as an example for a class like you, and everybody said, I'll make it available to us. And I didn't really want to be a computer programmer but I realized for small growers, they, it was simple and they liked using it. So we've been, we sell it, I think now for like $99 because I constantly have to hire students to help me improve it <laughs> <laughs> and do the things that you want. So it allows you to calculate your cost for greenhouse crops, for outdoor crops, look at the financial ratios, do some benchmarking against yourself, do some what if planning on paper and make production and marketing decisions that uh, improve your business and also manage your cash flows. So I think I'm almost right on time. Uh, I'm willing to hang around if people have questions. Otherwise, we'll see you next week. Yes? So what's the name of the website again for all your information? Uh, I just Google Rutgers Farm Management and it should come up. The name of the website? Uh, oh, and here, it's right here, I'm sorry, HTTP, it's at the bottom of the screen, okay. And it's, I think, on the bar to the left on the website, and that'll give you that little five crop free one. If you want the Excel one, we do sell that. Okay, so your homework, 
for next week is to do your financial plan. I know for most people that's not the fun part, but it's key if you're going to stay in business, you have to make money. And then we'll have um, another two weeks with you. So I, I actually, my plan is to next week be up in northern Jersey. So I will um, be watching speakers from here remotely, but we'll have <laughs> hopefully Madeline back and Nick Polanin, who's also on our team. So he's a great moderator. With, uh, uh, oh, we have land link. So I will, um, for you guys at the other locations, hopefully you're coming to annual, uh, the facilitators, hopefully you'll be at annual conference on Monday. I'll bring materials that have been left here to hand to you to give to the other locations. So good night. Thank you. turn off the sound.